export documentation. On 31st March 1991, the Government of India announced an improved system of documentation for exports. It is mandatory that it should be adopted by the exporters as far as possible. At this point only, let us note that to date, we have arrangements with only 80 countries around the world where UN key layout master documents are followed. With these countries, Indian exporters can use the improved version of documents announced by the Government of India as per the new exim policy of 1992-97. For other than these 80 countries, the Indian exporter has to ascertain from the importer of his requirements and must comply to his dictates for documentation. The basic dictum for the exporters comply 100% the letter of credit requirements for documentation. Otherwise, exporter could be in a problem and his payment may be stopped. It is also to be remembered that the exporter prepares export documents not for his own convenience but largely to meet the requirements of the overseas importer who largely conveys it through the letter of credit. Treatment in this lesson is therefore slightly exhaustive of documents where the old requirements have also been kept in view while introducing master documents. After studying this lesson, you should be able to understand Export Documentation Need of Document Preparation Commercial Invoice Certificate of Origin Airway Bill According to the Customs Act, Section 40, the person in charge of a conveyance vessel, vehicle, aircraft, etc. cannot permit loading of export cargo at the customs station unless and until the formal permission to export given by the proper customs officer is presented. Before granting the permission, the customs officer, however, ensures that the, the goods being exported are in accordance with the different regulations, particularly in terms of the the goods are of the same type, sort and value as has been declared by the exporter. Duty or cess levied thereon has been properly determined and paid. Provisions of Export Control Order, Export Quality Control and Inspection Act and Foreign Exchange Regulation Act are complied with. The Customs Act Section 50 further states that the exporter in case of goods to be exported in a vessel or aircraft has to present the shipment bill and other connected documents to the proper officer. Once the goods are ready, an exporter has to prepare and execute various documents at different stages of sending the shipment of goods to the importer. These documents are important as an evidence of shipment and title of goods for obtaining payment. The various documents are therefore of vital interest to the exporter and the bank which is the usual media of payment. The documentary requirements are both regulatory and operational in nature and have to comply with the rules and regulations of the Indian government as well as the importing country for different types of products. These requirements are different for different types of products. When exporting for the first time, exporters should always find out from their buyers the documents required for the product concerned. Accuracy and completeness are a prime necessity in documents covering export shipments. Whether 2 or 20 copies of the invoice are required by the buyer, the same should be supplied as the buyer probably has some reasons for it. Minor discrepancies of any kind either in the date itself or in the typing in the documents which look harmless sometimes assume a men acting form. Erasures and strike over in typing or changes or additions made in ink must never be indulged as these only arouse the suspicion that the documents have been tampered with. Any alteration or addition made by an authority issuing the documents must be endorsed properly with the signatures of the person issuing the documents only. 
if the documents are not the correct ones or if they are not filled in correctly to the last, the importer may not be able to get the goods when the ship carrying them arrives. The Government of India has made it mandatory for every exporter to use standardized pre-shipment export documents with effective from September 1, 1991. This is popularly known as Allied Documentation System, ADS, based on UN layout key. The ADS methodology involves the preparation of documents on a uniform and standard A4 size of paper. The documents are aligned to one another in such a way that the common items of information are given the same relative slots in each of the documents included in the system. This makes it possible to prepare one master document embodying the information common to all documents included in the aligned series and to run off all the aligned documents from the same master document with the help of suitable marking reproduction techniques. The ADS system dispenses with the conventional documentation practices, brings in uniformity in documentation, ensures economy, speed, accuracy and convenience, facilitates expeditors checking and processing of documents at different stages, generates as many copies as required of commercial and regulatory documents from their respective master copies through photocopying machines. United Nations key layout has made it possible for many countries to reproduce in one run the repetitive information on all the export documents from just one document called the master document. As a result, exports in these countries have been able to reduce the documentation costs by 50 to 70 percent. The documentation of simplified export documents has reduced the burden of the exporters and has given a push to the country's ongoing export drive. The exporters now can save at least 50% of the time and cost on documentation. It will thus help in expediting decision-making processes, virtually eliminate the chances of errors and facilitate electronic transmission of export documentation and data. For the purpose of allied documentation system, documents have been classified as commercial documents and regulatory documents. Commercial documents are required for effecting physical transfer of goods and their title from the exporter to the importer and the realization of export sale proceeds. Out of the 16 commerce documents in the export documentation framework, as many as 14 have been standardized and aligned to one another. These are Proforma Invoice, Commercial Invoice, Packing List, Shipping Instructions, Intimation for Inspection, Certificate of Inspection, Insurance Declaration, Certificate of Insurance, Mates Receipt, Bill of Lading or Combined Transport Document, Application for Certificate Origin, Certificate of Origin, Shipment Advice and Letter to the Bank for Collection or Negotiation. However, Shipping Order and Bill of Exchange could not be brought within the fold of the Aligned Documentation System. Regulatory Pre-Shipment Export Documents are prescribed by the different government departments and bodies in order to comply with various rules and regulations under the relevant laws governing export trade such as export inspection, foreign exchange regulation, export trade control, customs, etc. Out of the nine regulatory documents, four have been standardized and aligned. These are Shipping Bill or Bill of Export, Exchange Control Declaration GR Form, Export Application Doc Chalan or Port Trust Copy of Shipping Bill and Receipt for Payment of Port Charges. It is proposed to conduct training and orientation programs at all export centers to familiarize 
the exporting community with the new system. Export documents have to be prepared for various purposes like declaration of exports as per exchange control regulations of the country, transportation of the goods, custom clearance of the goods, other purposes. Export declaration forms have utmost importance and are binding on the exporter. It is therefore necessary that enough care is taken while declaring exports on these forms. Invoice is a document of content. Is the exporter's bills for goods and sets forth the terms of sale. The invoice is a basic document. As a document of contents, it must fully identify the overseas shipment and serve as a basis for the preparation of all other documents which in greater or lesser detail reproduce information from it. The exporter should strictly follow the requirements of the importer in regard to invoicing. The standard document in respect of the invoice based on the United Nations key layout which has been accepted as the basis of this document in many entries. The information requirements of the document have been determined after examining a number of forms of invoices used by leading export organizations and after series of discussions with the representatives of the Department of Customs and Central Excise and the Federation of Custom House Agents Associations in India. Invoices based on the suggested design will be acceptable not only in many countries but will also help facilitate processing of documents at various stages. The declaration given at the bottom left hand of the invoice follows the UN recommendation. The standard invoice can be reproduced from the master by masking only three columns that is notify party, insured value, and number of original B's or L number and date on the invoices. But under the present procedure for customs clearance and shipment of export cargo, this information and particularly in respect of the BL number and date will be available to exporters only after shipment has been effected. Where required under letter of credit, such information will need to the banks for negotiation, but for this, the rest of the information can be reproduced from the master. The starting point of the export contract is in the form of offer made by the exporter to the foreign customer. The offer made by the exporter is in the form of a pro forma invoice. It is a quotation given as a reply to an inquiry. It normally forms the basis of all trade transactions. It is proposed to conduct training and orientation programs at all export centers to familiarize the exporting community with the new system. The contents of the pro forma invoice are Name and address of the exporter Name and address of the importer Mode of transportation such as sea or air or multimodal transport, name of the port of loading, name of the port of discharge and final destination, provisional invoice number and date, exporter's reference number, buyer's reference number and date, name of the country of origin of goods, name of the country of final destination, marks and container number. Number of packing descriptions. Description of goods given details. Terms of internationally accepted price quotation. Signature of the exporter with date. Proforma invoice is very important because it forms the basis of all trade transactions and it may be useful for the importer in obtaining import license or foreign exchange. Commercial invoice is an important and basic export document. It is also known as a document of content as it contains all the information required for the preparation of other documents. It is actually a seller's bill of merchandise. It is actually 
a seller's bill of merchandise. It is prepared by the exporter after the execution of export order giving details about the goods shipped. It is essential that the invoice is prepared in the name of the buyer or the consignee mentioned in the letter of credit. This is the first basic and the only complete document among all commercial documents for shipment. The contents of commercial invoice are Name and address of the exporter Name and address of the consignee Name and the number of vessel or flight Name of the port of loading Name of the port of discharge and final destination Invoice number and date Exporter's reference number Buyer's reference number and date Name of the country of origin of goods Name of the country of final destination Terms of delivery and payment Marks and container number Number and packing description Description of goods giving detail of quantity, rate and total amount in terms of internationally accepted price quotation Signature of the exporter with date Commercial invoice is the basic document useful in preparation of various other shipping documents. It is used in various export formalities such as quality and pre-shipment inspection, excise and customs procedure, etc. It is also useful in negotiation of documents for collection and claim of incentives. It is useful for accounting purposes to both exporters as well as importers. The importers in several countries require a certificate of origin without which clearance to import is refused. The certificate of origin states that the goods exported are originally manufactured in the country whose name is mentioned in the certificate. The various types of certificate of origin are non-preferential certificate of origin, certificate of origin for availing concessions under GSP, Certificate for availing concessions under Commonwealth Preferences CWP and Certificate for availing concessions under other systems of preference. The various components of origin are Name and logo of Chamber of Commerce Name and address of the exporter Name and address of the consignee Name and the number of vessel or flight Name of the port of loading, name of the port of discharge and place of delivery, marks and container number, packing and container description, total number of containers and packages, description of goods in terms of quantity, signature and initials of the concerned officer of the issuing authority, seal of the issuing authority. The various significance of Certificate of Origin are Certificate of Origin is required for availing concessions under Generalized System of Preferences GSP as well as under Commonwealth Preferences CWP. It is to be submitted to the Customs for Assessment of Duty and Clearance of Goods with Concessional Duty. It is required when the goods produced in a particular country are banned for imports in the foreign market. It helps the buyer in adhering to the import regulations of the country. Sometimes, in order to ensure that goods brought from some other country have not been reshipped by a seller, a certificate of origin is required. An airway bill, also called an air consignment note, is a receipt issued by an airline for the carriage of goods. Airway bill or air consignment note is not treated as a document of title and is not issued in negotiable form. The various components of airway bill are Name of the airport of departure and destination The names and addresses of the consignor, consignee and the first carrier Marks and container number. Packing and container description. 
total number of containers and packages. Description of goods in terms of quantity. Container status and seal number. Amount of freight paid or payable. Signature and initials of the issuing carrier or his agent. Airway bill is a contract between the airlines or his agent to carry goods to their destination. It is the document of instructions for the airline handling staff. It acts as a custom declaration form. Since it contains details about freight, it also represents freight bill. Now let us check our progress. Bill of lading is also a certificate of title. Right or wrong? Wrong. Certificate of origin shows the details of the shipment of goods, which are the produce of the importing country. Right or wrong? Wrong. Export documentation helps in protecting the interests of buyers and sellers. Right or wrong? Wrong. Before we end, let us briefly revise what we have studied till so far. Documentation in export business is complex but not difficult to understand if one knows the reasons of making documents at different stages of export transactions. Some of these documents are made or secured at the pre-shipment stage while others are made or secured after the shipment has been made. The need for export documents arises due to commercial, legal and incentive perspectives. Commercial perspective helps in protecting the respective interests of the exporter and importer. Regulatory perspective emphasizes to follow the regulatory provisions of that particular country. Main commercial documents in CIF contract are commercial invoice, bill of lading or airway bill, post parcel receipt, insurance policy or certificate and bill of exchange. The details required to be mentioned in these documents will depend upon the terms and conditions of the export contract or letter of credit. Commercial invoice performs many functions. It is a document of contents and a bill. It gives information about the shipment and payment terms and also acts as a certificate of origin.